Hello everybody, it's Mrs Neighbour. I'm back again with another box and sock story. And this week, the story I'm going to tell you is Jack and the Beanstalk. So without further ado, let's get started. Once upon a time, there was a little boy called Jack. And Jack lived in a cottage in the woods with his mum. There they are, and they lived together ever so happily, although they hadn't got a lot of money. And one day they were so poor that Jack hadn't got any money for they hadn't got any money for treats or days out or anything like that. Eventually, they hadn't got any money, even for food. Mum checked down the back of the sofa, she checked under the bed, she checked in her handbag, once, twice, three times, no more money could be found. And the only thing that mum could, Jack's mum could do was to get Daisy, their precious cow, and sell her. Jack, Jack, said Jack's mum one morning. Jack, you've got to take Daisy, our cow, to market and sell her, and then we'll have money for supper. Oh, are you sure, mother, said Jack, who loved Daisy the cow and didn't want to lose her. Yes, I'm sure we haven't got a penny in the house, Jack, and the only thing we can do is sell poor Daisy the cow, and then we'll have money for supper. Oh, okay, mum, if you're sure. So, Jack took Daisy the cow, very gently put her on a rope and led her off to the market. Off they went. There you go, Daisy. I'm going to take you to the market and someone nice will look after you and take you home. On the way, they met a man. And the man looked with interest at Daisy the cow. And he said, hmm, what a fine looking cow, young boy. Would, what would you be prepared to sell her for? Um, well, I think at least five pounds, for we need to have money for supper tonight. Five pounds, indeed, said the man. Let me tell you, young sir, I've got something even better than that. And he held out his hand, and in his hand were five sparkly beans. They shone and glistened in the noonday sun. There was a red bean, there was a blue bean, a yellow bean, a green bean, and an orange bean. And Jack looked at those beans and he thought, oh, they do look rather good. What can I do with them? Oh, well, you see, they are magic beans, said the man to Jack. Magic beans, said Jack. Oh, yes. Please, I'll have those magic beans. And so the man held, handed over the five beans to Jack. Jack took the beans, the man took Daisy the cow, and off Jan Jack ran all the way home. And off the man went very quickly, as quickly as he could, with Daisy the cow. Jack got back home in double quick time. Mother! I've sold Daisy the cow. Oh, did you? said Jack's mother. And how much did you get for her? Oh, son, that's wonderful news. We'll have supper tonight. Well, I didn't get money, said Jack. What? said Jack's mother. I got something better than money. Oh, yeah, said Jack's mother. I got these and he held out his hand and there were the five coloured beans the red the blue the yellow the green and the orange glistening and sparkling in the sunlight jack's mother took one look at these beans and she said beans you sold daisy the cow for beans you silly boy now we'll have no supper and nothing for breakfast either you silly boy, you need to go to bed and stay there. I'm so cross with you. Give me those beans. She took the beans. Jack went upstairs. He was very, very worried and a bit, a bit scared of his mum because his mum looked in a really bad mood about these beans. She took the beans. She said, I'll show you what I do with beans. And she threw the beans out of the window. They sailed out of the window and they landed in the back garden. 
poor Jack went off to bed without any supper and he cried himself to sleep until his pillow was wet with his tears. Well, in the morning, after a very restless night, Jack woke up and his room was pitch black. Oh, thought he'd woken up in the middle of the night. And then he realised that actually his curtains were wide open. What was causing the darkness in his room was that there was something big and green outside his bedroom window. So Jack went over to the window and he had a little look, closer look. He tried to open his bedroom window, but he couldn't because outside the bedroom window was a gigantic beanstalk. Jack quickly got dressed. He ran down the stairs out of the front door and he looked with astonishment. It just went on and on and on and on, up, up, up into the clouds. Mother, called Jack. Mother, come see, come see. Wah, wah, said Jack's mother. If you're going to tell me anything about those stupid beans. Oh, and then Jack's mother had a look at the beanstalk that just went on and on and on and had grown overnight. Well, said Jack's mother. She wasn't often at a loss for words, but she jolly well was today. She had nothing to say about this beanstalk. She was too full of astonishment. Jack decided there and then that he was going to be climbing up that beanstalk. And so he ran and he got a little bag and he put um, his, uh, a few little bits and bobs in it. And he decided that he was going to climb up the beanstalk there and then. Oh, Jack! out of the mist and the clouds he saw a path ahead of him that led to an enormous castle so Jack walked along the path till he got to the castle and there was a ginormous door and Jack decided to knock on the door hello said Jack hello the door opened wide with a creak and there stood a woman do you want? said the woman. Oh, hello. Uh, I was wondering, I've been climbing and climbing a big gigantic beanstalk and then I've been walking and walking down a long path and I'm really thirsty and I'm really hungry. Would you have a little bite to eat for me to eat and, and something to drink please? Well, well, you better come in, but come in quickly because the master He's asleep right now and if he sees you, oh my goodness me, he will be so cross and then you never know what he's going to do next. So Jack followed the lady into the house where she put him down a plate of egg and chips and beans and do you know he scoffed the lot. It was delicious and he had a big glass of orange squash and his tummy for the first time in a long time actually was quite full. Oh, well. All of a sudden, big thudding footsteps could be heard. And the woman got very, very afraid and she said, Oh my goodness me, you better find yourself somewhere to hide right away. So Jack ran and hid in the cupboard. In came the big thudding footsteps. They belonged to two great big feet that were attached to two ginormous legs, a gigantic body, humongous arms, and an absolutely massive head sitting on the top of two gigantic shoulders. In came the giant and he sniffed around with his great big nose and he went, <laughs> Fee five. Oh, from 
I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. <gasps> oh, no, I don't think you can smell a little boy at all, said the lady. I think it must just be a little smell that blew in through the window. Never mind, master. And off she went and brought him back a ginormous plate of food, which the giant ate. And then he said to the lady, bring me my bag of gold. Oh, yes, I will, you master. And off she went and she brought back a big bag of gold. And, and the giant counted the gold on the table great big pile of it. It's all glinting. Jack was watching the giant counting it all. And that looked rather familiar to him, that bag. He couldn't think why. He felt he'd seen it somewhere before. Anyway, then the giant, because he'd eaten his great big meal, suddenly felt rather sleepy and went to sleep. So Jack crept in and he took the bag of money ran out of the castle. He ran down the path and he ran all the way back down the beanstalk to his mother. Mother, 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 I went up the beanstalk and I found an enormous castle and there was a giant living there and he got a great big bag of gold and I stole the bag of gold and here it is and we are rich. <gasps> oh, Jack, do you know that bag of gold? belonged to your father and that naughty giant stole it many many years ago which is why we're so poor oh <gasps> wow said jack what a naughty giant that is i think i'm going to go back up there tomorrow and see what else he's got that belonged to daddy oh yes i think there's actually a goose that lays gold necks and a harp that plays magical music really said jack and they belong to my father so the very next day, Jack decided he was going to climb back up the beanstalk. He went back to the castle. He had some more food and drink. And then he hid in the cupboard when the giant came. The giant came along, had his meal. And then he said to the woman that was serving him, bring me my golden, my goose that lays golden eggs. So off the lady went. She got the goose and the goose started laying golden eggs until there was a huge pile of them. Well, then the giant fell asleep. Jack came out. He took the goose and he took the eggs and down he went back down the beanstalk and back to his mum. Mother, 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 I went back up the beanstalk and I went back to the castle and just as you said, yes, there was a goose that laid golden eggs and here's the goose that laid golden eggs and here are all the eggs too. Oh, Jack, that's wonderful news. She said, now, tomorrow you can go up and get the harp. So that's what Jack did the next day. Jack went back up the beanstalk. He went back to the castle, he met the lady once again. He had a little bit to eat. Then the giant came in had his meal and then he said to the lady, bring me my magic harp. Yes, master, said the lady. So she went off and got the harp, put it back in, sat it on the table and it played the most beautiful music you have ever heard. And even Jack listening in the cupboard had tears in his eyes because it was just so beautiful. And the music was so lovely that it started to send the giant off to sleep. Pretty soon he was snoring. Out comes Jack. I think you know what's going to happen next. He's going to grab the harp. But this time the harp shouts, Master! Master! I'm being stolen! Master! Wake up! So Jack, so the giant woke up and he saw Jack and Jack had to run as fast as he could to the beanstalk and the, Jack, the giant was running as fast as he could after Jack and he was getting closer and closer he was catching up and the Jack had to climb down the beanstalk as quickly as he possibly could and then he ran to the house and he said mother 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 fetch me the axe the 
just see the giant's boots coming down the beanstalk. Here's the axe, Jack. Jack got the axe and he ran over to the beanstalk and he knew he was going to have to chop it quite a few times because the trunk of the beanstalk was so thick and he had to chop it five times, once, twice, three times, four times, five times and the giant was very nearly at the bottom when all of a sudden, Timber! Whoosh! Down fell the beanstalk. Down fell the giant into a ginormous pit and the earth just covered him completely his mother and with the bag of gold, the goose that laid the golden egg and the magical harp that all belonged to Jack's father that the greedy giant had stolen many years ago. They were able to live a rich and happy life once more and that in fairy tale books is called living happily ever after. And that's my telling of Jack and the Beanstalk with boxes and socks is today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back next week with another one. Bye-bye.